Hungarian case, it is still an ex ante question today how much the representatives and officials of the government on all levels, not only specialists in the foreign ministry, have really understood the functioning of the EU presidents. Well, let me also mention that national preference formation inside the European Union is an ambivalent story in itself. Let me quote a British scholar, Tim Horton, who writes, the key to explaining national preference formation lies in perceived vulnerability and weakness in the case of the Czech Republic. The process of preference building might work very differently in relatively old and in relatively new member states. It is again a question how much Hungary will be able to incorporate European approaches to European problems. In a country where, according to the dominant public opinion, big, rich and old member states make the political deals inside the European Union. And I wonder whether we can separate the territory of the EU presidency from the conflicts on the battlefields of domestic politics uh, in the background. Or it is just the usual business of a functioning, different democracy that we enjoy in this country today. So political observers and journalists reporting about Hungary next year will simply concentrate on our EU presidency and EU affairs. Well, the first six months long performance of the Hungarian government has rather negative international media coverage. Is it possible to have a successful presidency in such a European media environment? We will see. And my last question is whether an EU presidency can really fulfill its potential mission to bring all European issues back home. But at least as a Czech analyst, Jan Carlos argues, in the Czech case again, the presidency role might lead national actors to endorse some integration objectives they might not otherwise have advocated. 